Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to measure correlations and run regressions in Stata. So I'm going to start by bringing in a data set. This is one of the built-in data sets in all versions of Stata. It's census data by state. If I just go over here and browse, you can see each observation is a state. We have the population, the population in certain age brackets, the population in urban areas, number of deaths, marriages, and divorces. So suppose we were interested in the relationship between the number of divorces in a state and the urban population in that state. If I wanted to just see the correlation between these variables, all I need to say is core and then the name of the variables. And I'll be able to see this little output here. So what this output says is that the correlation of divorce with divorce is 1. The correlation of divorce with pop urban is 0.9356, and the correlation of pop urban with pop urban is 1. I could have done this adding more variables in. I could have added, let's say, marriage and death, and then I'm going to get this bigger set of correlations where, for example, the correlation of pop urban and deaths is 0.9718. So these are really high correlations, and probably the reason why we have these correlations is because states with a lot of people tend to have both large populations in urban areas and lots of deaths, marriages, and divorces. So if we wanted to see whether states with high urban populations tend to have high divorce rates conditional on their population, we might run a regression. So to run a regression, we use the command regress, which people generally shorten to reg. So we can do reg, we're going to regress as the outcome variable here, like the y variable, is divorce. And then the regressors are population in urban areas, and let's also include population as, a, as an explanatory variable too. So the syntax here is you say reg, and then this is your y variable, and then however many x variables you want, you include after that. So when I run this command, now it's going to give me regression results. So the thing which you're generally looking for in regression results are the coefficient estimates. So of course you have usually like a, a beta zero, like a constant that's at the start of the regression. So this is the estimate for the constant in that regression. This is the estimate for the coefficient on population. And this is the estimate for the coefficient on pop urban. And then in order to do hypothesis testing about this, here we have the standard errors for each of these coefficients. We have t-statistics and p-values for the null hypothesis that the coefficient is equal to zero. Uh, various other information. Up here we have the r-squared for the regression, the adjusted r-squared, things like that. The number of observations which were used in the regression. So there are a few options with regression. One of the common ones is to use heteroscedasticity robust standard errors, which you do by including the option robust. So you'll see, of course, this is what it looks like. It'll say robust standard errors now instead of just standard errors like it said before. Another thing which you might want to do, so let's say in this data we wanted to control for what region of the country we were in. So if we wanted to compare places which were in the same region and had higher or lower urban uh, populations, uh, if we wanted to see whether those places have higher or lower divorce rates, we could run a regression where we control for region, but region, if I do a tab on the variable region, uh, region is takes these four different values. These are the labels which are imposed on the values. Are the northeast, north central, south, and west. And so uh, we wouldn't necessarily want to assume linearity here. This is really like a qualitative variable. So if we wanted to control for region, we would want to include dummy variables for this. And we could make dummy variables for these variables individually, but there's a shortcut for how you can do this. And that's using xi. So I'm going to say xi colon at the start of this command. And what this tells Stata is look for something, look for a variable coming down the pike which is going to have an i in front of it. And think of that variable as being every variable that that 
uh, every value that that variable takes, let that be like a separate dummy variable. So now I'm going to do this same regression. I'm going to regress divorce on the population in urban areas and the population. And now I'm going to regress it also on I dot region. And what this does is, so there's going to be a dummy variable for every value that region takes, except, of course, you always have to omit one variable. So Stata chooses to omit the first value of region. Then uh, you can see down here in the results, I get the coefficients on these other variables. I still have a constant. Uh, but then these other var like so here's a, a dummy variable for if region was equal to 2, and we have a coefficient estimated on that, a dummy for if it was equal to 3, if it was equal to 4, etc. You'll also notice over here in the variables window that these variables are now in the data set. We actually have uh, these new dummy variables in the data. This is nice in some situations, but if you had, you know, we, we were working in an example here where there are only four values of region. If we had something where we had, let's say, 50 values of region, it might be sort of inconvenient to have a lot of variables running around in the variables window, and it might also be inconvenient to sort through regression results where you have a lot of this stuff cluttering up, the, cluttering up your coefficient estimates. You know, if this was if these coefficients were not numbers that you were actually interested in, if you were just interested in using this as controls. So another way to control for every value with a dummy variable is with the command a reg. So I could do a reg divorce and population in urban areas and population. And then I say absorb region. And this is going to do the exact same thing that the previous command that we did did, except the only difference is it's not going to create any new variables. If I had dropped these variables, you would see there would be no new variables. Uh, and of course, it suppresses all that in the output here. The constant is going to be different due to the, uh, due to the different mechanism by which Stata does this. That's not really important, but what you'll notice is that the coefficients that we're interested in here are the exact same whether we do it one way or the other.